Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Um, at this moment, we're pleased to start the opening ceremony of UFMG Summer School in Brazilian Studies 2023. We now invite to compose the plenary of this evening the president of Universidade Federal de Minas Gerais, Professor Sandra Regina Goulart Almeida. The Dean for International Affairs, Professor Aziz Tufi Saliba. The Deputy Dean for International Affairs, Professor Barbara Orfano. Our keynote speaker, Professor Mario Fernando Montenegro Campos. And to open the session, I now pass the floor to the President of Universidade Federal de Minas Gerais, Professor Sandra Regina Goulart Almeida, for her con considerations. Thank you very much, Luciana. Boa noite. Boa noite. Good evening. So, first of all, I would like to welcome you all to FMG. It's a pleasure for me to be here opening this seminar. Uh, so I was told that we have 15 uh, students from 15 countries, 25 different universities, besides our own university. So uh, for, it's a very special moment for us at UFMG uh, to welcome you on what uh, you call Summer School on Brazilian Studies. You know that it's our winter, right? So this is our winter. It's as cold as it gets here in Brazil. So I refuse to say summer school because it's winter for us. Winter school is not so attractive, right? So we usually say holiday school on Brazilian studies. But you are here uh, on a mission from your university. So uh, And for us, it's our duty to welcome you here and to see you not only as an exchange student or somebody who comes to take a course in our university, but also as ambassadors of your own university. So here we do have, uh, we do hope that you have a chance uh, to have uh, an experience that is unique in terms of Brazil, uh, and also that you have an opportunity to make friends with our other Brazilians and that you come back. So this is our hope, that this is just the beginning of a fruitful experience for you, uh, that you learn about our country and our culture, and that you come back. And uh, as I said, that you become ambassadors of your uni universities uh, in relation to our university. So you're here because we do have some kind of cooperation with your university, and uh, we treasure that cooperation, and we treasure the, the students that come to visit our university. As you know, uh, it, this is a federal university. It's federally funded. It's a public university, so we're very proud of it. And we are also considered to be one of the best best universities in the country, and the best federal university in the country as well. So, uh, it's, so it's a pleasure for us to be here at this moment uh, when we are considered we have such a, a very good reputation in terms of our university. So uh, we do hope that this, that you learn a lot about, about Brazil, and, and that, as I said, that you do come back after listening to the many things that we have to offer. It's, it's a difficult, it's a different country. It's not so easy to understand, Brazilian country. It's a huge uh, country, and you are in a state uh, famous for its history. It's a historical uh, uh, state. It's, it's a place in which we have, uh, in the past, we had a lot of gold, and because of that, it's the name, uh, the, it gave us the name of the state, which is Minas Gerais. Minas comes from the mines. General is the general landscape that we have in the state. Uh, so this is a historical state that shows that we'll be able to to present to you a bit of our country that is very diverse, 
you know, in terms of its people, in terms of its scenery, in terms of its climate as well. Uh, so I do, we do hope that uh, you start your journey in Brazil here, but you are able to continue in other regions of our country. Uh, we are also here in Belo Horizonte and Minas Gerais. We are famous for our hospitality, so I do hope that you take advantage of that hospitality, uh, and also for the food. So I hope you do have a chance also to enjoy Brazilian food, and especially the food from Minas Gerais. You know, uh, it's, it's one of the most traditional uh, cuisines in the country. So with these words, I wish you a welcome. I would like to thank Professor Aziz and Professor Barbara for uh, for putting together this course. And I also would like to thank very much all the team of uh, the, our Office of International Relations that uh, is going to take care of you while you're here for this course, for this summer, winter uh, course, a, w a holiday course as well. So thank you very much, and I do hope you enjoy your experience here in Brazil. And again, I do hope that you come back, and I do hope that you go back to your university saying, uh, in nice things about Brazil, your experience in Brazil, and also about our university. So thank you very much. And now, Professor Aziz Saliba, our Dean for International Affairs, will greet you and introduce our keynote speaker, Professor. The floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. Uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, it's a Pleasure to see you for the second time today. I hope you have had a very good uh, first day at our summer school. Um, I would like to thank our president, Professor Sandra, for her presence and for her support, not only, um, for, not only for the support for this course, but for all the initiatives that we have at the international office. Uh, Professor Sandra herself had, uh, the off, uh, was the officer for international affairs. She had my position um, 20 years ago. And, uh, <laughs> and she has been a great supporter of our office. I also would like to thank Professor Barbara and all the international office team for all the care in preparing these and uh, the other sessions. And last but not least, I'd like to thank our keynote speaker. Uh, and it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you Professor Mario Fernando Montenegro Campos. I've had, had the opportunity to work with him and I can attest not only that uh, he is a well-regarded, highly respected scientist, but also uh, an example and uh, uh, an exemplary embodiment, I would say, of values such as integrity, dedication, and humbleness. Uh, professor Campos is a professor of computer vision and robotics in the Department of Computer Science at the Federal University of Minas Gerais. He holds... Uh, degrees in engineering and computer science, all from UFMG, and a PhD in computer and information science from the University of Pennsylvania, uh, US. His research interests include cooperative robotics, robo uh, robot vision, sensor information processing, in which areas he has published over 250 papers in both qualified journals and conferences. Uh, he has supervised over 60 theses and dissertations, and his main contributions are in haptics, multi-robot cooperation, aerial uh, robotics, and um, robot vision. He is the founder of the Computer Vision and Robotics Lab, Verlab, here at UFMG. He has close collaboration with researchers from the US and Europe, uh, is sponsored by Brazilian and foreign agencies and has been the PI and participated in several research and development uh, projects with industry partners such as Petrobras, the largest uh, oil company in Brazil, Vale, the, the largest mining company in the world, Ingetron, LG Electronics, um, and others. He has been a distinguished lecturer in the IEE Robotics and Automation Society, and he was vice provost for research from 2018 to 2022 of this university. Uh, so without further ado, I give the floor to Professor Mario Campos, and I invite the other members um, of this table to uh, watch it from uh, the audience. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, it's working. So thank you very much, Professor Aziz, for these so kind and undeserving words. <laughs> so that's typical of him. So thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Sandra, for, for being present. It's a great pleasure to, to see you again, right? Professor Barbara. And thank you all for being here. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to, uh, to speak tonight. And I do hope that uh, with whatever I'm going to say here is going to encourage you not only to be uh, only welcomed by YFMG, but also to bring back to your home, right, the good tidings that in Minas Gerais, Brazil, there's a great university. And you should bring more of your friends to come over, OK? So that's the, that's the main goal. So I was struggling about the title of this presentation. And uh, since I'm no longer the, <laughs> the vice provost for research, but since I've been there, uh, there for, uh, say, four years, I couldn't help. But I want to talk a little bit about this, which is a great pride uh, for us, right? So I call excellence in research and in innovation. So I want. To I want to show a little bit of the university for you uh, in the hopes that actually you get very much interested and come back, okay? Uh, don't take me wrong, but it reminds me of uh, uh, those spies, don't know a little bit about the Bible, uh, that went to Canaan to find out about the, the land. And uh, there were 10 spies. So the, the land was very beautiful with honey and milk. But then there were giants there, too. So when they came back, 10 of the spies, they said, oh, it's terrible there. We shouldn't go there. But two of them said, no, it's a great land. So you as spies today, I do hope that you are the two spies and go back and say, it's a great land, OK? So off we go. Well, uh, you can recognize this little animal here, right? So that's a rattlesnake we call jararaca, right? Cascavel, sorry, Cascavel. Ah. And of course, we have Google here. I'm not saying Google is Cascavel, OK? No, it's not. <laughs> and also have the nanotech, nanotechnology, and the mosquito, OK? Also the virus, the addiction, and the vaccines. We also have the land of the penguins and the tomb of the pharaohs. <laughs> You should be puzzled by now, right? So again, what's the research at UFMG? Those things that are going to show you converge to this. So research is the main issue and the main topic of tonight, OK? What's research? Uh, by now, you all should know what research is. Uh, I talked to Professor Aziz, and his, he told me that most of you are uh, maybe at undergraduate level, which is great. The university uh, has a great uh, uh, has great programs uh, in this area of what he calls scientific initiation. And I, I did it when I was a few years back, right? So most of us actually have been through this. And that's a great start for undergrad research. But what's the research? So Aristotle was the, the guy from, from the ancient Greeks that it's basically the one that uh, was a pioneer in the areas of logic, observation, investigation, and demonstration. So when we talk about research, more, oftentimes we go back to him, right? You can go to the dictionary and find this long and lengthy explanation, right? OK, I won't read it. Also, if you go to Wikipedia, you're going to find some explanation what research is, right? But research is such a, well, uh, uh, broadly used word, right? And you, you all can relate to this, right? Most of you know Alice in Wonderland. And this scene right, is where Alice goes up to the cat, and she asks, which way should I take? Which road should I take, right? And then the cat, a Cheshire cat, replies to her, depends on where you want to go. She says, doesn't matter. And then he says, doesn't matter the way you should go. She asked a question, right? But maybe not the best question, but there was a question, right? So I would simplify this and say, what's research? Okay? It's the art of formulating and asking questions and search for answers. That's too broad. But that gives us an idea what research really means. But what does the researcher look like? No, not like me. <laughs> 
So when you talk about research, and some of these stereotypes come, not stereotypes, actually these research can come to mind, right? Uh, you, all, you all know all these pictures. Some of them you may not know. This is Osvaldo Cruz. He's our own Brazilian research. We, we owe a lot to him, right? But the rest I think you know, right? But what do our research look, look like, right? We know that UFMG produces relevant, cutting-edge researches in most of knowledge areas. And I would like to proudly say that we are the first university in the country, according to MEC in EP, which is the Ministry of Education, and they actually evaluate, analyze all the graduate course, undergraduate courses, and they, they rank you in the university Federal University of Minas Universidad Federal de Minas was ranked number one. Second university in the country, according to Times Higher Education, among the four best universities in the country, among is the seventh university according to the, the Times uh, Higher Education in uh, Latin America. It's f sorry for the Portuguese, and among the 20 best uh, universities according to QS. And it happens to be that 40 of the UFMG faculty are among the 100, 100 most influential researchers in Latin America, 40 out of 100. So this is what a researcher of your UFMG looks like, right? So we have among those 40 representatives in arts and design and architecture, business and management, economics and econometrics. Oh, these are real people, OK? And by the way, you can be sure this presentation was not done by Chad TPT, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Engineering technology, history, philosophy, and theology, medical and health sciences, law and legal studies, social sciences, natural sciences, and these are our undergrad proudly presenting to you the faces of our undergrad researchers. So this Raquel Bandeira, she won the award, a very important award in Brazil called Carolina Body of Science and Woman, right? So she won that prize doing some very a fantastic, I won't be able to actually to even reproduce what she's doing so complicated, right? In the area of uh, uh, liver stuff, right? you know, it's, it's complicated stuff, right? And recently, Paulo Marazzi, he won the CNPQ. For those who don't know, CNPQ is our agency for research. It's a national council for research in, in Brazil. It's, it's the one that actually responsible for leading most of the research that, that happens in Brazil, one of the funding fund the agencies. And Paulo Marazzi, he's not even an undergraduate. He's a high school, school student here at one of our, uh, our we have a co-tech, technical school. And he won the Scientific Initiation Junior Award in, of this year, okay? So as you can see, this is, in our DNA, from the very young, very young they're already uh, going towards uh, performing great research. So undergraduate studies in our university, as I mentioned to you, we are first, according to MEC, to our Ministry of Education. Uh, that, that's the number, right? the, the ranking, ranking number, 4.368, the highest one. We have 91 different courses, and I must emphasize that we cover most areas of knowledge. So whatever you think about study, you can come here. More, moreover, you were able to actually have what they call the transversal studies. You were able to take courses in different disciplines, different courses, and you make your own track here. So it's, very, it's a fascinating way to study here. That number may be out of, uh, not, not really most up to date, but we have about 35,000 undergraduate students altogether. It's a large university. We have excellence in undergraduate research, as I mentioned too. So early in their academic life, students are encouraged to uh, go into the labs, approach professors, and start doing research very early while they're here, okay? As far as our graduate programs, again, we have 90 graduate programs that covers many areas of knowledge, right? And uh, there is a, a evaluation uh, of the, our graduate programs that ranks from three to seven, seven being the highest. So f six and seven mean that you are in an international level graduate program, okay? 
But 5, 6, and 7 means that you are at excellence level. So 68% of all graduate programs are at that level. And we have about 11,000 11, students at graduate level, okay? Uh, excellence graduate in postdoc research. We have numerous, it's very difficult to list all this, right? But they have numerous national and international awards and highly cited publications. And it's important to know that along with the undergrad research, of course, the graduate students, they are very much involved in research. Research is done, is performed with all, all of them, okay? Now, I want to give you a, a bird's eye view of what we actually publish, okay? So there is this all science journal classification. So they have 27 areas of knowledge. And they represent this along the circle. So you have, for instance, mathematics, physics, chemistry, and so forth and so on, right? So, according to Elsevier, which is a, 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 a company that uh, uh, works with uh, publications, right, and papers, and do all the bibliometrics and everything else, they, uh, they have what they call the, the key topics, the most important topics that are being considered in research, right? So, among the 12, thousand topics, the key topics, uh, WFMG has coverage that is shown here, okay? So it means that, broadly speaking, we have publications and research in most of the areas of knowledge, at least considering the 27 that I just mentioned before. So this coverage is very interesting, why? Because it shows the university is not biased to our, towards any direction specifically. But this, high co this, this broad coverage actually shows that we do have the opportunity to have interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary approaches to the research that we do, right? So, now consider the top 1%. You can see the, uh, the university has some coverage, right? But as you get the top five, uh, key topics, right? We start to cover more and more and more. The total output, as we call, of the university, as far as uh, bibli bibliography, artistic, technical, it's shown in this graph. You can see that it's an ever-increasing graph, right? Of course, we had some damage caused by the pandemic, right? But nevertheless, it's still growing. Uh, and I'm not going to bore, bore with a lot of numbers, but just to have an idea. If you get the total output, right, we have the three main areas we call social science, life science, and natural sciences. We have this number of faculty in each one of these areas. For instance, social sciences have 1,100. Life science, about 1,200. Uh, and natural science, about 635, right? So, and this is the output, meaning all the production both bibliographic, technical, and so forth, right? And this, this tells us how this is distributed in the university. As far as researchers are concerned, CNPQ, which is the National Council for Research, as I mentioned to you before, it ranks researchers according to their, they call the productivity. So UFMG has 729 of these awarded researchers, okay? And also the technological development we have about 22, so many that you have been recognized as a top researcher or to a top uh, technological development uh, researcher, okay? Have several research groups, about 3,000 3, research lines, different lines of research, and altogether have about 6,000 PhDs engaged in research. This uh, mentions a little bit about our, our research infrastructure, it's very broad, all areas, right? And uh, we, we, ha we have what we call the research infrastructures of the university. So there are several of them. So even the most specifically here, the general labs. So you see, it's a, it's a large number. Now, one important thing that I'd like to emphasize here. This graph shows something very important. Oftentimes, people think about uh, publish or perish. You should publish your paper. Otherwise, you perish in your career, right? Uh, somehow that's true. That's changing a little bit. But nevertheless, if the goal was only to publish papers, we're doomed. What are we going to do with all the knowledge that's produced? 
Of course, there is the training of students, which is very important. That's one of our missions, right? But all the results, what's going to happen to them? If they do not have an outlet to the society, it's going to be in a drawer somewhere. So one key thing about the FMG is shown in this graph. If you consider the patents, many patents, right? And you, you check the patents that cite UFMG papers, you see that's a very uh, impressive number. Of course, you may be concerned that there's a decreasing shape on this graph, right? But remember, citations, they happen over time. So as time goes by, of course, those, those numbers are going to be increasing. But what's most important that our research is so uh, relevant that patents cite our research papers. Okay, that's one way. On the other way, which is very important, you have papers that cite our patents, meaning that the patents that we produce, they are relevant, not only for the, for the sake of technology, but also for the sake of science, okay? With Bain. Very well. <laughs> but much more than research papers. We have a great innovation ecosystem. So here you have UFMG, here you have a foundation, and our foundation is a key, plays a key role in the development of research. FUNDEP is the foundation for the development of research. It's the university's foundation. We have other foundations at the university too, but this foundation is key for us to actually expedite and make things happen in a quicker way. As Professor Sandra has mentioned, we are a public university, and we suffer from the public system, in the sense that all the, all the red tape that you can imagine happens here, right? Fundep actually helps expedite the research in such a way that we're able to run faster, right? On the other hand, we have here Begatech. Begatech is our technological park, and there it houses many of our startups, spin-offs, and so forth and so on. So it's a great system, right? So, I just mentioned three of them. They, they stand for the foundation of this great ecosystem, innovation ecosystem. Now, as far as patents are concerned, the university has been the forerunner of patents in this, among universities in this country. So there's, a, there's a, a competition there, but we basically stand, we stay in the first or second place as far as uh, uh, producing, uh, 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 generating proper, uh, intellectual property protection. So as of now, we have 2,100 property protections, okay? That's a, that's a large number. We have 1,300 patent submissions, 138 national and international intellectual property licenses, which means the patent has been approved and has been licensed, which is the most important thing, right? If you just have a patent, just something that you, uh, like you, <laughs> you have something that you put on the shelf. But when you license, it means that it's going to work for you. You have 143 national and international collaboration agreements in technology transfer. So transferring technology, right? So we, UFMG is, a, is an expert in that. And also have 62 graduated startups from our startup agency in know. Some industry partners, I just put some here, just so you have an idea. Most of you, most of you may not know uh, some of them, but some you know, right? Like IBM, Merck, Intel, and so forth, right? So UFMG has cooperation with industry, close ties, which makes our research actually to be uh, uh, output, right, to these, uh, to these companies, okay? Don't think that's for free. There's a technology transfer there, okay? Now, one thing that I can say for sure, research excellence fosters disruptive innovations. Of course, we can think of innovation, something that happens everywhere. But I tell you something, if you have a solid research outfit, for sure, you're going to reach disruptive innovation. Ah, you remember the mosquito? So what the mosquito has to do with it, right? This trap is called the mos mosquito trap, right? 
This trap is fantastic because it's able to capture these mosquitoes, especially those who cause, uh, transmits dengue, chikungunya, zika, and so forth. And with that, you're able to actually have an idea what's going on and have public measures to deal with it. So this company was sold to this great rental queue. It's a multinational, right? What about nanotechnology? What can we say about it? This, oh, just chopped off there. But the, this is called a nanoscope. What's a nanoscope? Light has a wavelength. You know that. So in order to see in the smallest dimensions, light does not help you. You need some other means to actually see a molecule. So this nanoscope was developed entirely here. With it, you're able to see the smallest structures of matter, even molecules, even a virus. And this research, which has been, uh, been conducted for over 20 years, has finally produced this device, which was the cover of nature. So this, what you see here, is called an antenna. And with the device is able, with it, to see these nanostructures. And this research outfit actually generated a spin-off called FabNS. And they're selling now to European countries. Let me say some, something here. If you are in the areas of physics or chemistry, uh, the equipments are extremely expensive. They're very specific. And they cost millions of dollars. So we have always been importing this type of equipment. But now we're able to export high technology or highly technological instruments to the, what's called the first world. So it means that we are able actually to produce these things. We just need the right environment, which we already uh, were able to prove that we got with Fabianes. Another area of great importance is graphene. Most of you may have heard of graphene. It's a, it's a, it's a special sheet of carbon, right? And have several ways of dealing with it. And we are able to implement the first pilot scale plant for the production of not only graphene. You're able to produce graphene somehow, but the graphene that we produce here is the highest quality, highest purity. And because of this, Merck, the giant pharmaceutical company, they recently signed an agreement, Professor Santos was there signing it, to have a, 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 an environment so they would be able to have access to this technology. Now, we go abroad soon. So we have, UFMG has a team that deals with archaeological studies in Egypt. And here you see uh, one of the tombs of the tomb of Amenet, 1800 uh, years before Christ. And this has been exclusively given to the University of Federal, University of Federal Universities to dig. It's a special, it's a, it's a special, it's special arrangement, arrangement that we have with the, Egypt, with the Egyptian uh, government. So many things were found there. There's some very interesting uh, stories about this, this site. Uh, for a long time, it was being used just a regular housing, you believe that. And then they were able to find out that this was a very, of very important uh, historical value, archaeological value. So UFMG in the Pharaoh's tomb, right? Now, in the land of the penguins, UFMG is the leader of the uh, research, uh, research team that goes to the Antarctica to study some special things like the archaeological, the archaeology of those men and women that were in the Antarctica a long time ago. This is fascinating. Professor Zaran King from Fafish, he, she, uh, he leads that, uh, uh, that effort. And some different type of fungi, right? Like this blue fungi. Professor Luis Rosa, I think they're going there. They, uh, they should be going there because it's summer, uh, summer in, the, uh, in Antarctica now. Now, we very proudly say our own vaccines. Everybody remembers this terrible image, right? Everybody knows this. Reminds you of a SARS-CoV-2, right? COVID, remember this? <laughs> so UFMG pioneered in producing the first entirely national 
vaccine. From beginning to now the, the trial phase, which is now. The, develop, the research development was all done here, nothing from outside. And the technology used here, I must tell you, is better than whatever you have now in the market, okay? So you're going to see this very soon, hopefully beginning of next year. So the, this uh, vaccine is called Spintech. What about the addiction? There's another vaccine called Calix Coca. This vaccine is being developed by the uh, faculty medical school, and they both are running for this Euro prize, and we hope they'll be able to get it. If there are any doctors or physicians here, please vote. I cannot vote because I'm, I'm not a doctor, right? So, so we are running for that. Now, what about the rattlesnake, right? What does it have to do with anything else? Have you, if you know anyone who has high blood pressure, most likely he has taken a medication that uses this principle of bradycinin. And what this has to do with UFMG? Professor Beraldo, in the 50s, he discovered that in the venom of the cascavel, or rattlesnake, you, you were able to fight bradycinin. And by synthesizing that, you were able to get a medication that were, was able to control blood pressure. Well, maybe you heard, maybe not, but we Mineiros are known to be always behind the mountains. Maybe for some of you, what we have here is not mountains, just small hills, right? But we have, the, we have been known to be so shy, right? Keep to ourselves. But this is very true. This medication helps millions and millions of people worldwide. It was possible because of this discovery by Professor Beraldo. What about Google? Well, again, a case of a spin-off. A group of professors from the Department of Computer Science, in the beginning of the internet, that was back in 1995, beginning at least in Brazil, they started to develop what they called Todo Brasil, where they start to collect all the pages available then uh, uh, of the Brazilian internet. And they develop a very smart search engine. And Google noticed it. And these two guys, you may know, Larry Prage and Sergey Brin, they came here, right across the street, and they purchased that startup. Now, in Belo Horizonte, we have the engineering site, the only one in the southern hemisphere that is entitled to touch the search engine. Now, why is this important? When you search in Google, you give a search word, right, and you expect the answer as fast as possible, right? If you're able to tweak that engine so you can get, let's say, 0.01% speed, that means lots of money. And this team, Brazilian teams of Brazilian engineers, right, software engineers, many of them from this university, they were awarded internally to Google a prize because they were able to increase, I won't say how much, but the speed of search of Google. So these people, right, this only office was possible because of this successful uh, case where research actually outpoured to the society, okay? Well, I'll end with these few words. Again, from Aristotle, it says, the more you know, the more you know, you don't know. And quoting Guimarães Rosa, <laughs> he says something in Portuguese that goes like this. It's very strange, even in Portuguese, okay? Eu quase que nada não sei, mas desconfio de muita coisa. Which in a oh, simple translation would be, I almost don't know nothing. You know, that's wrong English, right? Terrible. But I suspect many things, okay? That's it. Thank you.
we are now uh, welcoming some uh, questions. Would that be fine? Um, set the microphone. No questions. <laughs> we're, we're getting the microphone. You can take this. You can take this one. Okay. okay. So, anyone wants to be the first? At this, I hope I convinced you to come back, right, <laughs> and bring your friends. <laughs> No one, come on, guys, don't okay. be shy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Hi, uh, yeah, my name is Anne. I'm from Berlin, Germany, from Freie Universität. Wow. Freiburg, you said? No, it's Berlin, ah, uh, but Berlin. the university right, is okay. called okay. Uh, Freie Universität. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, first of all, I wanted to thank you for, for the speech. And I'm just having like a very quick question. I think you can answer very quickly, but I might have missed it. You were talking about the vaccination, which I think was called Kosha Koka, Alguma Koisa Sorry, something like this. Um, and I think I missed like the, the main purpose of it. So I was really interested in the combination of like addiction and vaccination, how you can really what you can sure, do Sure, 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 sure. I think Thank that's you. a fair question because I actually didn't spend much time over it, right? Uh, this vaccine has been, is being developed by the, as I mentioned, the School of Medicine. And uh, what's uh, important about this uh, vaccine is that uh, it's able to reduce uh, uh, the attraction, let me say so, to both cocaine and crack, right? So they've been doing some testing, right? And the, for instance, the, uh, the mayor of Sao Paulo, they already, uh, you maybe heard of it, uh, he already actually uh, asked for uh, this vaccine. So, so we do hope that somehow, right, this actually gets spread out and uh, maybe use it. it actually, this, uh, it's, uh, it has been uh, shown in some of international uh, news also. So we hope that uh, it's going to bring some uh, you know, betterment, right, for society. So, is, was that a question? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> you heard about that? Yeah, I Okay, okay. Okay. Sure, please. So, to uh, my name is Alex, and I'm from Belarus. Also, thank you very much. Welcome. It was very, <laughs> muito obrigado. Uh, it was very interesting to uh, listen to your speech and also to continue on the topic about vaccination. So, at first, you spoke about the vaccine, uh, the vaccine uh, from uh, COVID. Yes. COVID, yes. Yes. So, uh, but was it developed like in time? Was it like in time to get to the patients when uh, the COVID was at its spike? Ah, I see. That's that's a good question. Uh, I also asked the same question. Okay. Uh, the, the, uh, as we all know, uh, one of the terrible things about COVID or SARS-CoV-2 is that you have uh, so many variations, right? You have, they, <laughs> they ran out of names for it, right? Alpha, beta, whatever. And it has to do with the fact that the vaccines, they target the, uh, the S protein, right? So as you notice, the name is Spintec, S, S, P, I, N, T, C. The S and the N, they stand for both the S protein and the N protein, which means you're able to target the regions of the virus that change less, mm -hmm. okay? So you may have some mutations, but this area of the virus, they mutate very little. So this vaccine would be able to have a better coverage. So that's why they, they really, you know, <laughs> rooting for it, that maybe with the whatever wave that may come, this vaccine will be able to give that coverage, okay? So like the second, Second, uh, secondary doses, okay. Ah, so you are just getting ready for the for these mutations, so you already covered it for that? Excuse me? So you are already covered, like, to cope with it, to deal with it in the future in case it mutates again? I didn't get it. If you are already covered... Uh, I mean, uh, so uh, if you say that um, 
uh, it's um, it's mutates the same. Mm, it's ready for the future mutations. Yes. 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 Ah, uh, so yes. in case the virus mutates yes. and so there will be new mutations, this vaccine will be exactly. at use. Yeah. Okay. Th that's what that's what's hoped for, and that's what's being tested for. So okay. that you, you'll be able to target uh, uh, more variations, more mutations. Okay. Parabéns. Ah, thank you. <laughs> I don't know how to say anything in Belarus, but in Russian, спасибо. <laughs> Thank you for a question. Thank you, Professor. I'm Isabella. I study public relations here at Fafish. Ah. And I wanted to know what was your favorite research do during your great career here in UFMG and why? What was my? Your favorite research. Favorite research? Yeah as a professor. Wow, I cannot play favoritism. <laughs> <laughs> I, must tell, I must tell you something very interesting. Uh, um, when I was kindly invited by Professor uh, Sander to, uh, to, be, uh, to, to sit in, the, in that chair of uh, uh, Vice Provost for Research, I tell you, I didn't have any, uh, <laughs> I didn't have any idea of what was about to encounter, right? And I was fascinated. The university is so rich, so diverse. And uh, it's very difficult for me to tell you which is my preferred research. All of them are so fantastic. I didn't have to, I was so much concerned about time, so I rushed through my presentation, I apologize for that. But uh, you have to research in so many areas, in humanities, for instance, in literature, which is the area of <laughs> our, our president, right? And uh, social, social science, there's so many th fascinating things going on. That's very hard to actually to single out one of them. They all fascinate. And uh, what really uh, impresses me is that uh, uh, the capacity that our researchers, and I tell you something very important, right? The research that we conduct here, uh, of course, the, the, the main names, the professor's name uh, usually are cited, right? But uh, it's amazing to see how great are, are our students. So our students are the best. Right? So you have both <laughs> undergraduate and graduate students. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do as much as we do now. So if UFMG is able to reach such standard, right, it's because we do have a wonderful, really nice, great group of students, both undergraduate and graduate, okay? So that's how research is conducted here. Many times it's sometimes separated, right? But without the graduate studies, undergraduate studies, research would be just empty. Okay. Hi, <laughs> I just had another question because we are talking about diversity in research and um, about the diverse research at UFMG. And I wanted to ask about not only diversity in the topics of research, but also in the people conducting research and um, the way research is conducted, basically, because I know that um, there are some approaches to get, um, especially like talking about the history of Brazil and especially about the history of Minas Gerais and Belo Horizonte, um, to include formerly marginalized parts of the society into the process of knowledge production. And I know that there's, for example, the center of, uh, I think it's called um, Saberes Tradicionais, which is working with, the, for example, Quilombola leaders and so on. And yeah, I wanted to ask if there are any further kind of approaches or if there are any more um, aspects to this which yeah, you take to also include diversity, not only in the topics of research, but also in the modes of knowledge production. Thank you. Okay, uh, let me see if I get it correctly. Uh, <clears throat> I would say that uh, uh, the participation, is talking about, for instance, uh, uh, women and so forth in, in research, right? Um, this has been a very uh, interesting and recent uh, discussion, right, uh, overall in the country, right? But uh, maybe you, uh, you don't know, I don't know if you don't know, but uh, the university, the Federal University right, of Minas Gerais, it has a, a, a very interesting track record of in inclusion, right? Uh, the, the, the question is, is it perfect? Of course not, right? But uh, the university has been um, uh, really working very hard to make it happen, right? So. As far as, uh, depending on the area uh, of knowledge, you may have some uh, different percentages, right, of uh, this, this participation. But as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, there is no, uh, no, no hindrances, right, uh, 
uh, no hindrance for the participation of uh, any, any, anyone, okay? Uh, I would say something, for instance, in my area, uh, uh, computer science, for instance, we do have a shortage of women. Uh, in, so, in exact science, as we call it, a shortage of women. And we've been trying to understand why. And this, is a, this is not only a, an issue of an, uh, our university, but it has to do somehow with uh, what comes before that, right? So the uh, high school. We, we don't actually know exactly what, ha what happens, right? We know, however, that in high school, we know so many talented uh, girls that would be uh, great in math and so forth. And somehow, in a point, they, they just don't go to this area, right? I don't know why. But it is true that in the exact science, we have shortage, right? So less women uh, in this area, right? But we do want to attract more and more. But we have to know how, right? So we have to understand how to do it, OK? And that's part of the answer, I think, so. <laughs> OK? All right. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Mario, for such uh, insightful presentation. We are honored to have you here. I would also like to thank Professor Barbara and Professor Aziz for their presence here uh, this evening. And thank you all for this first day <laughs> of summer school. I just have um, two quick announcements. One of them is about the um, list that you are supposed to sign. So don't forget to do that. If you haven't signed it, please do so now. And for those of you who are asking about the laundry at uh, Moradia, the, uh, the, the person responsible for Moradia is coming tomorrow so that you can do the registrations because the opening hours are the exact same hours that we're here. So don't worry. When she comes tomorrow, Jessica, she's going to explain to you all about the tokens uh, of the laundry. And so don't wash your clothes today. Wash your clothes tomorrow when you get there, OK? <laughs> and then um, we bef just before the, the bus that's coming at 8, we are taking some pictures uh, with our deans, professor, and the students, OK? so that we can put in our Instagram. We're gonna put, we're gonna put the flags there, and then you, just, you come in a bunch according to your home country, okay? Vai lá, começa, pô, né? Primeiro, vou pedir pro Lucas. Okay, so now we're starting taking pictures with the students. So, Hiki, Great Britain. 
Come on. Reino Unido. Where's the UK? <risos> oh, meu Deus. Então, fica isso, melhor. Tomara que erre, hein? Tomara que a gente erre, hein? É porque tem muita. É porque tem. E o que é mais de um país, né? Sabe que pega a bandeira lá? Acho que nem pega, né? Sei lá, vamos ver o que vai acontecer. Here in Brazil we say X, not G. <laughs> okay, great. Now Australia. Australia. Ah, tem a minha lista. É. Ela está naquela minha prancheta. É, Austrália é só dois. Agora, Cazaquistão. Como é que fala Cazaquistão? Não sei. <laughs> Now, Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. What is Chile? Ahora nuestros hermanos de Chile. Alors, nos amis de France. And now, I love Romanian, but I can't speak it. <laughs> There's um, from Romania. I can't read the name because I'm, I'm blind. Francesca? Ah, oh, she's not here. No, she's, she's arriving tomorrow. Germany. Ich sprich nicht Deutsch. Germany. <laughs> Essa aqui, ó, não não foi. É. <laughs> Now, a bunch of people from Malaysia. Uh, there's a bunch, like three of them, or four, no, three.
Yeah, it's so nice. I, I think it's the first time we have Malaysia here for the summer school. Rick, honor to have you here. Amigo es un amigo solamente de Panamá. Panamá. Panamá es también primera vez. É verdade. Dizem que é lindo. Un otro amigo de México. Now our friends from China. I was trying to learn Mandarin, but I still can't, you know. <laughs> Next year, <laughs> I'll introduce you in, in Mandarin. I guess we have two friends from the United States of America. Only one? One or two? I don't know. Robert. Uh, okay. Um, and then we have also two. Two friends from South Africa. Agola. <laughs> and now I promise I'll try to pronounce it correctly, Belarus. <laughs> I'm sorry, friends. I'll spread the word. Agora acabou, né? Todo mundo. Só os brasileiros. Tem, tem coisinha. Que bonita a, a bandeira, né? A bandeira. E now, of course, of course, meus amigos brasileiros, né? <risos> pois é, porque tem um tanto, né? Tem muitos. É melhor, eu acho. É, um pode sentar aqui. Os baixos. <risos> Quem for mais baixo fica na frente. Isso. Você é maravilhoso, Rick. Ah, nem. É bonita aquela bandeira, né?
<laughs> Great. Yay. Thank you very much, guys. And um, I'm going to try, because it's not 8 o'clock yet, and the bus scheduled for 8, I'm going to try to reach the transport so that maybe, uh, so be together and around here because we might uh, try and get um, the bus to arrive here earlier so that you can get home earlier, okay? Thank you very much for this first day, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you. Ah, okay. Sorry, sorry. Uh, one more thing about Moradia. The blankets are at the front desk, at the concierge. You can get blankets. I think people were dying of cold yesterday. And they were like, oh, my God. And they're like, I came all the way to Brazil <laughs> to freeze. <laughs> Don't. There are, there are blankets, okay, in the concierge. We're sorry for that. Obrigado, professor. Foi ótimo, né? Obrigadão. Primeiro dia...